TMNT Shell Razor is the tallest and fastest indoor roller coaster in the United States. Located at the Nickelodeon Universe theme park inside the American Dream Mall, this is a large Gerslauer Eurofighter with a diverse and well-rounded layout. But the ride has a few issues. I'll explain why in this review. Fujiku Highland in Japan opened Takabisha in 2011. This is a Gerslauer Eurofighter with a launch, eight inversions, and the world's steepest drop. The prior record holder at the time was Timber Drop of Fry's Purtiest City in France, which had a max angle of descent of 113.1 degrees. Takabisha's drop would reach a whopping 121 degrees. When the new Nickelodeon universe was to open at New Jersey's American Dream Mall, they wanted a record-breaking headlining coaster. They decided to build a near clone of Takabisha, except there were three changes. First, the initial section would no longer be unclosed. Compare that to Takabisha where the initial drop and barrel roll are completely in the dark. I think this makes the latter far more exciting. Second, the ride would take the record for the world's steepest drop. The drop was made 121.5 degrees steep, which was 0.5 degrees steeper than Takabisha. Having ridden both coasters, the drops ultimately feel identical. Third, Takabisha was built alone in a field. Shell Razor is a Gerslauer spinning coaster named Shredder winding all around it. This creates some exciting visuals, both on-ride and especially off-ride. It is quite the sight seeing the large mess of track as these two rides interact. Shell Razor is green track and supports. Meanwhile, Shredder has purple track and supports. So the two rides contrast nicely. Then Shell Razor's a really cool lighting package at night. The track has these twinkling lights. Then the Beyond Vertical Drop has spotlights to draw attention to it whenever a train is up there. That is because this element was built into a special section of the roof. For much of the park, the roof is just over 100 feet tall. The roof was raised an extra 60 feet, or 18 meters to accommodate the 141 foot, or 43 meter tall lift hill of Shell Razor. This ride's placement otherwise is not aesthetically pleasing. You see, it's on a concrete slab against a wall with no windows. And it's worth noting, the ceiling has no windows either. But this does have the benefit of making the on-ride experience more disorienting. You lose your sense of direction on the inversions because all the surrounding surfaces are gray in color. As the name suggests, this ride is named after the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The ride itself has no theming but there is a fantastic looking entry facade. You have a physical bus with the turtles alongside it. This is in front of a backdrop bearing the ride's name. This entrance is a bit hidden and tucked away though. Most of the adult rides are on the left side of the park. Shell Razor is in the back right corner behind the kiddie rides. I have never visited this park on a particularly busy day, so I've never had to wait too long for Shell Razor. The longest waits I've had were 15 to 20 minutes in 2020, when the park had social distancing measures in place. Usually, it has been a near walk-on for me. The queue oddly has three lanes and staircases leading up to the station. One is the general standby line. Another is for quick pass. This is the park's paid skip the line system. I have never seen anyone using it on the days I'm there, but this is available if you visit on a rare day when the park is slammed. But then there's a middle staircase that is never used. I wonder if that was once meant to be a single rider line, because that would come in handy with the four cross trains. Each vehicle has two rows of four, seating a max of eight guests. The coaster has six cars. Usually, the park is three in use, but I've seen two on very quiet days, and four on busier days. New Jersey is already one of the strictest states when it comes to amusement rides and Shell Razor runs over another ride in Shredder. So unsurprisingly, this coaster is a fairly strict loose article policy. Guests are instructed to remove everything from their pockets. There are bins on the unload platform. There are also lockers adjacent to the entrance. These were completely free in the park's early years, but now they're paid. Riders are restrained by over-the-shoulder restraints. This part is unfortunate. While Gerslauer now offers lap bars in their newer Eurofighters, this was not possible for Shell Razor. There was not room to accommodate lap bars on the launch hardware without a major redesign. 
Gerslauer fixed this problem on their Infinity Coaster model, but not the Eurofighter. These over-the-shoulder harnesses are snug, and they run alongside your ears. There are these little foam pads, but they're still attached to a hard shell. And it is possible to hit your head at points in this ride. That is because Shell Razor is rather bumpy. This is my biggest con with the ride. And this issue is only worsened in the years after it opened. There is a particularly bad pothole after the Beyond Vertical Drop, but the train can also shake throughout the inversions as well. I recommend leaning forwards to minimize headbanging. It is still possible to get a headache though from the rattle, but this at least minimizes discomfort. In terms of seat selection, I prefer the back row. While the view is somewhat obstructed, I find the coaster a bit smoother back there, and that seems to be the general consensus as well. Once checked, you turn out of the station and have a short but steep drop. No airtime, but you are abruptly pulled downwards. Then you have a tame turn followed by a super slow barrel roll. This offers fantastic hang time. There is a very noticeable rattle though. You also get a unique head chopper with the ground beneath you. As fun as this visual is, I do prefer this element in Takabisha when it's hidden in the dark. Next, you pass through a short set of brakes. Then you have a quick little dip into the launch. It sort of tosses you forwards. Then the LSM launch forcefully yanks you backwards. This is a powerful launch that pins you to your seat. I love how strong the accelerations are in these Gerslauer thrill coasters. This leads into the tallest inversion, a supersized corkscrew, but it feels more like an inverted top hat between the scale and sensations. It feels like you will stall at the apex. This offers good hang time, and it's an ultra disorienting maneuver with those aforementioned bare walls on all sides. The subsequent valley is strong positive G's, and I often start to gray out here. This leads into a banana roll. This is a unique variant on the Cobra roll where you do not fully unbank at the apex. This is quite dizzying, and you also get a smidge of float. Then the exit applies even more positive G's. This is followed by a much smaller corkscrew. This one is very fast. It is not super forceful or whippy, just disorienting from the visuals. Next is an S-Hill. This is a frightening head chopper with the ride's later inversions, and it offers a little bit of airtime as well. You then jump into a brake run, getting some weak airtime. You then sharply decelerate and round a corner. At this point, you are halfway through the ride. You then climb the vertical lift hill. It is nice getting to experience one of these without the sun positioned in front of your eyes. At the top, you roll over the crest and you slam to a stop on a holding brake. This very noticeably causes the entire structure to sway, which is pretty freaky. If you look in front of you, there are glass windows allowing you to see New York City in the distance. You really need it to be a clear day to maximize this view. After about 15 to 20 seconds, the holding brake releases. You slowly creep over the edge. The drop is so steep that you cannot even see the bottom. There's another trim at the start of the descent, but once you clear that, you are treated to extremely strong ejector airtime. Drops on Eurofighters are excellent anyways, but this one has extra power from the sheer height. The bottom of the drop has decent positive Gs, but there is also a nasty pothole. This very noticeably jolts the train. I've heard this has been fixed over the past year, but I have not ridden the coaster since 2022. Then you have three inversions back to back to back. It is a dizzying and intense sequence, but all three of these have stronger rattles than the inversions in the first half, which can make it a bit of an endurance test. First is a dive loop. You lift out of your seat a bit at the apex, then you are pulled downwards getting more G's. Second is a cutback. This is faintly floaty, and you have two great head choppers with Shredder's lift hill. One at the top, and one coming down. Third is Nimmelman. This rides like the dive loop, just in reverse. You then rise into the final brakes, getting one last bit of airtime before coming to a stop. You then return to the station, ending the 3,300 foot or 1,000 meter long experience. Length is certainly not an issue with this coaster. You're basically getting two rides in one. 
I do have a critique about this ride's pacing. While the coaster moves through each half quickly, the pause in the center for the vertical lift hill and holding brake is a bit disruptive. There's an 80 second pause between the brakes and start of that drop. I would have preferred that you start off at the lift hill. Then you have the launch into the second half. This would minimize the brakes in the action once the coaster gets going. The final thing I need to know is this ride's unreliability. Gerslauer Eurofighters are generally reliable, and I have not heard about this ride's sister coaster in Takabisha having much downtime. But Shell Razor has become quite tricky to ride in recent years. It has had some very lengthy closures. The park will post the ride's status on both the website and ticket booths. But you cannot trust the end date. I have seen this park keep on pushing the closure out additional days and weeks. I have no clue what this ride's specific issues are. The only thing I have personally witnessed is a failed launch. On most coasters, this is no problem. The train will roll back and reset. But with Shell Razor, the launch apparently has no way to rescue the train, which will cause the ride to close for the remainder of the day. I've had this issue happen twice. So what would I rate TMNT Shell Razor? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This ride is intense, the launch is powerful, and the flurry of inversions will leave your head spinning. Then there are a few spots of airtime, most notably the record breaking beyond vertical drop. The layout has a lot of good elements. I do wish the first and second halves were reversed though, but that's a personal preference on the pacing. My biggest con has to be the roughness. This coaster has gotten difficult to re-ride given the shakiness. I often come off this with a headache now, even when riding defensively. If this ride were smoother, it would probably be a 9 out of 10. That's how strong it is in every other area. I prefer Takabisha over Shell Razor since it's smoother. And at Nickelodeon Universe, I do prefer Sandy's Blasting Bronco over Shell Razor. But these rides do form a respectable one-two punch for thrill seekers. So those are my thoughts on TMNT Shell Razor at Nickelodeon Universe. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Do you have an issue with the roughness? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.